we didn't set out to set up this service. It developed as the result of a closure of King Edward VII Hospital in Midhurst. At that time, we had a 12-bedded, very active palliative care unit there. It served a very um, rural area with about a population of 180,000. Macmillan said they would continue to fund this service, which is unusual for Macmillan, as you know, <coughs> if we did something innovative. So we needed to replace the community service. We needed to access palliative interventions. We needed to replace our bereavement service, or continue with our bereavement service, our volunteer service, and to be able to access inpatient beds, but not actually have a building of our own. The core elements of this uh, community service were to maximise patient choice by providing as much patient, um, as much treatment and support in the community. So really to give people a choice about where they were looked up, where they're going to be looked after, to recu reduce acute hospital admissions and inpatient stays. And we do that by offering our interventions at home. Very, very important to ensure the close working between all the sectors and even more importantly, that we're a service that doesn't replicate what is already going on out there, but enhances the current care that's given, and to be a sustainable and affordable service for the population. It's a consultant-led team with uh, three senior doctors. The service lead, which is Sue and myself. The, we've got six clinical nurse specialists. We've got a full clinical support team. Those are trained and untrained nurses that go out with the doctors, um, helping them do the procedures and things at home and also offer personal care to our patients when required. We've got an occupational therapist and a physiotherapist. We have a counsellor and a bereavement service manager. We've got admin support. We've got about 75 volunteers. A lot of them came from the hospital with us, but we've recruited several new ones. And they provide a really flexible um, approach to the things they do and, and undertake a lot of different duties. We have a daily meeting. Um, where we all congregate first thing in the day, look at our patients, decide who's going to do what. I think that's where the flexibility of the team comes in. We look at patient needs, see who's the best person to go out and visit them and exactly what they're going to need that day. Lots of people thought, oh, they'll stop referring to you, they won't want a community-based service. You haven't got any beds, you, know, you don't have a hospice. But in fact, they've increased, and last year they were considerably more, and we were up to well over 400 referrals. Our referrals come from mainly from GPs, two-thirds GPs, one-third hospital referrals, but we always ask the GPs permission um, before we visit their patients to make sure that they're, they're quite happy for us to go. Predominantly, our patients are still people with cancer. Actually, the vast majority of patients die where they want to die, which is at home. Um, and We've got quite a number of patients who live in a nursing home and so that's their place where they live and so it's the preferred place they want to be. But many will elect to go into a nursing home rather than the ho any, if they wanted to go into a hospice, they're a long way away, um, so they will go in. And we've got four community hospitals within the patch and to many people they are their local hospital and that's where they want to be. And that's us.